I want to give you some uh, intuition behind renormalization. Why renormalization? This is actually a problem which arises not just in a quantum field theory or other theories in modern physics, but we have it also in classical physics. Consider, for example, a charged particle at rest. This particle creates an electric field with a magnitude equal to E, which is equal to absolute value of Q divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r squared, where Q is the electric charge. So here we have the absolute value because I'm considering the magnitude of the electric field produced by the charge. Epsilon 0 is the vacuum permittivity and r is the distance between the point at which we calculate the electric field and the center of the particle, which we assume to be a sphere with radius re. So the particle will be a sphere with a radius equal to re. The energy density of the field, which is produced by this uh, particle, is epsilon zero e squared over two. And the total electromagnetic energy in the field is therefore an integral of the energy density, epsilon zero e squared over two, and we integrate over a volume. What kind of volume do we have to integrate over? So we need to integrate over all the available volume in three dimensions, so all the available space, minus the volume occupied by the sphere, because the free space, all the space that we have available is the space that is not occupied by the sphere. So basically this becomes an integral of epsilon zero. E squared over two can be written as Q squared divided by 32 pi squared epsilon zero squared times one over r to the four. And then the volume, so the differential of the volume, we know that the sphere has a volume equal to four over three pi r cubed, right? So we can calculate the differential of this, which is four pi r squared dr. So we are integrating basically over um, a sphere, but in particular, we have to integrate, as I said, over all the region outside the particle. So we start our integration at r equal to re, and we go all the way up to infinity. And here I have four pi r squared dr, like this. So this is a simple integral to carry out. Basically, it's the integral of a constant times one over r squared. And what you get is q squared divided by eight pi epsilon zero times one over r e. The total energy of the charge would therefore be the following. We call it E zero. This is the total energy of the charge, which is equal to mc squared. And now I will tell you more about the constant m plus the energy that we found here. So q squared divided by 8 pi epsilon 0 times 1 over r e. Where m here is a mass due to non-electromagnetic origin. Here in the formula we have the energy due to the electromagnetic field. In particular, in this case, we have the electric field of the charge. And then we also have a contribution of the kind mc squared, where m should be thought of as some mass of the particle, which is not due to electromagnetic origin. Now, this energy should equal m0c squared, where m0 is the observed mass of the particle. So this is observed. This is the observed rest mass, because the particle is at rest. Right? And therefore, the mass m0 should be equal to m plus q squared divided by 8 pi epsilon 0 c squared times 1 over re. And here we see that 
when Re goes to zero, we have a problem because one term diverges. So this term here would diverge. It is as if the mass, the mass of the non-electromagnetic origin could be renormalized to give a finite result. So this mass here, basically, we can think of it as being divergent and it goes to minus infinity. So plus infinity, minus infinity, we get a finite result. This is intuitively close to the seemingly unacceptable renormalization argument that we had we have used when we found the term 1 over epsilon squared. And remember that epsilon would go to zero. When we removed the ordering ambiguity for uh, the mass squared operator, intuitively, if mass squared is of the order of 1 over epsilon squared, then mass should be of the order of 1 over epsilon. So this should be the divergence related to mass, right? Just like in the case we found here. And this is just an intuitive explanation as to why we need renormalization in physics. And I will not say anything more about it. I know this is uh, overly simple and it's way more complicated than this, especially because it puzzled physicists all around the um, 20th century. And this was a very difficult problem to understand, to understand conceptually. But this is basically it. So this, this problem was also present in the classical theory.